Hello everyone, it's Chaos, and we are back with a brand new Vintage Story playthrough. It's been a few years since I had this on the channel. Um, we just hit Vintage Story version 1.19.3, as you can see down here. Uh, we've got quite a few mods in here, and we're going to go over those real quick, and then we're going to get into the world setup. So let's go ahead and jump over here to our mod manager, because Vintage Story is amazing. It has built-in mod support, unlike other block game. So, you know, let's roll. Uh, we have advanced backpack construction system. Let you create linen and leather backpacks. We got ancient tools. Adds useful ancient tools like a mortar and pestle for things. We got animal cages. Adds cages for animals so you can catch, transport, and display them. Hell yeah. Panzer Bjorn story. Makes bears tameable. Duh. Like, you can tame a bear, you're going to be able to tame a bear. Auto map markers, self-explanatory. Better fire pit. The Vengeance Story vanilla fire pit sucks. The entire fire pit temperature resets whenever you finish cooking a piece of meat or whatever you're cooking. It's not how fire works. Fire doesn't get colder because you finish cooking something. So this fixes that. Um, better Jonas devices. I'm not entirely sure what this is. Um, it's part of the tech stuff for Vintage Story that you get to late game. Um, so I'm guessing it makes the devices based on the Jonas like story and PC better. Sounded cool. Um, better ruins. Now, Vintage Story 1.19 already drastically improved their ruins. Better ruins just stacks more on top of that. Like, more ruins, more better. Um, we got block pick. Creative mode middle click. It doesn't actually give me a block. It just grabs the block if it's in my inventory and puts it on my hotbar. That's it. It's not cheating. It's just better management. Brick layers. Um, I believe this is just more brick textures. Or just more blocks. Uh, bullseye changes up how the aiming for the bow works. Uh, takes away the randomness and adds it more like an FPS mode. There is a command I'm going to have to run when we get into the game to actually make it work better. Uh, it's a static targeting, so the targeting will actually be bound to my mouse cursor. And it will move the whole screen with it. Carry on. Carry very things, like chests and stuff. Cellar door. Adds doors for sellers because... Yeah, that just makes sense. You know, you're going to build cellars in this game. It'd be nice to be able to get in and out of them without having to tear open the wall. Chisel tools. Um, adds more tools for chiseling. This game already has a pretty robust chiseling system. The chisel tools mod makes it even better. Clay casting. Plaster molds for clay, clay production. That's going to be great later on when we need to make a lot of things out of clay. Um, we get some libraries. Crateful. Improves... improves bleh, 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 bleh. Improves crate storage mechanics. There you go. Dana tweaks. There's a crap ton of tweaks in there. There's a good like 20 some odd mods on the Vintage Story mod database that are discontinued because they are now all compiled into Dana tweaks. I'm not going to go through all of them all. Um, decor Bazaar. Decor Blocks. Expanded Matter. Expanded as base game materials with new types and variants. Um, extra clay forming. More things you can make out of clay. Or more multiples. You know, just things you can do. You can favorite items and never lose them. It's perfect. Feverstone's horses. Hey, it adds horses to the game. They are tameable and you can ride them. Fixed paths, improves path blocks. I think what this does is vanilla path block path blocks. I can't say path. Path blocks have a pixel removed from the top of them. Like other block game does too. It's really weird. It's ugly. They don't blend together well. I think this fixes that. So we're going to roll with that. Freedom units. Um, the game does a really bad job of turning Celsius into Fahrenheit. and has a whole lot of floating decibels that just are janky. This fixes that too. Uh, from Golden Combs adds more beekeeping stuff beyond just skips. We'll get to that later on. You can actually build hives, which is really awesome. Geology additions, self-explanatory. 14 new rock types, 18 new gemstones, 15 new minerals. Compost from grass. Turn grass into compost. Hanging oil lamps. You can hang oil lamps. <laughs> a lot of these are self-explanatory. Um, the health hammer. When we ever get that, it's automatic foraging for most things. Herbarium's a library. HUD clock. That's a visual thing you'll be able to see in-game. Uh, so I'll show you that. Joy Sailing. Get a sailboat. More than just a raft, we have a sailboat. Um, there's a recipe for the linen tunic. Firearms. Black powder firearms. I don't know when we're going to get to this, but I'm pretty stoked for that. Like, it's pretty awesome. Medieval expansion adds a whole lot of medieval type content. More clay. Adds red and brown clay deposits. So now we have 
Fire clay, blue clay, red clay, and brown clay. You can do things with them. It's awesome. More plaster. More plaster types based on vanilla wood types. So you can, it's different, like, plaster building blocks. Really cool stuff. More torch holders. Oils. Adds oils, finishes, waxes, and soaps. Plus their uses. Pet AI. Pies on the shelf. Vanilla, you can't put pies on a shelf. Fixed. <laughs> Plant materials. Um, this adds a few new things. Let me look at the wiki page here for it. Okay, plant materials. Um, adds some new ruins. It also adds three new crops for fruits and metal, apparently. Adds two new fruit trees. One fruit is a source of dairy and the other is a source of health. We got berry bushes that adds speed enhancing fruit. There's some brambles, living rock, dead rock, grown furniture, chlorophyte, which is a new metal. Uh, all sorts of stuff. Mulch blocks, new type of plant-based cheese, bunch of disc decorative blocks. Just more content. Um, pots on the shelf. You can't put pots on a shelf in vanilla. No, we can. Primitive Survival. The number one mod that most people know for Vintage Story is Primitive Survival. Adds so much to the early game for traps, fishing, all sorts of stuff. It's crazy. Um, Prospect Together is technically a multiplayer mod. That is based on prospector info, which adds a highlighted prospecting info thing to your map and game. I think this is just a continuation or a port. Quick stack, quick stack to nearby chests. Rivers. The game doesn't have actual rivers. It has lakes and oceans, but it doesn't have rivers. This adds actual flowing rivers. It's awesome. Uh, rust creatures. Oh my god, we've been going for seven minutes. I'm still talking about mods. Rust creatures, new drifter variants, and rust-inspired enemies. I've seen a video for these. They look awesome, so I had to add them. Scythe more just adds things that can be cut with the scythe. Sortable storage adds a sortable variant of vanilla chest, label chest, trunks, storage vessels, and baskets. Woot! Stained beams. You can stain beams. Self-explanatory. Status HUD uh, adds a new HUD information thing down here, too. Just more stuff you can actually see about status for your character without having to go into your character page. Uh, sticks from firewood. You can make sticks from firewood. There you go. Still, ne still necessaries. There is an old mod called necessaries that the original developer has abandoned that adds a whole lot of cool things. One of them is like a uh, like a sifting rack. Um, adds a whole lot of cool things. You can look it up. Zig the Hedge's necessary mod. Stone bake oven. Large stone oven used for baking. Tallow candles. All that animal fat has more than like two uses now. Can make candles for it. Uh, temperature scales, that's a code thing. The dungeon. Adds a mod to bring procedural dungeon generation to Vintage Story. Yes. World content. Dungeons. Hell yeah. You heard that? That was me drinking water. <clears throat> um, let's see. Critters pack. Hedgehogs, ducks, robins, waxwings, squirrels, yaks, and some more. More animals. More better. Natural trail mod. This one's awesome. It adds trails to the ground as you and creatures walk them. Uh, so the more you walk the same path, the more of a trail it builds, which is awesome. Like it's just, just world lore and development. I love it. Um, underground mines. Uh, to go along with our dungeon generation, there is random underground mines that seem to be massive, but they're also really deep. So they're going to be really difficult to explore. They will screw with your temple of stability. And yeah, more just cool stuff to do. Still useful stuff. It's, a, it's another continuation mod. There's a lot of mods that have been abandoned in Vintage Story because it's been around for a little while and people get tired of modding. And, but because, you know, modding communities for block games are not kind all the time. Um, so people get tired of it. Or they get busy with life. You know, this is free. Uh, Vise blocks, V's blocks, more blocks to play with. Visible high fertility particles. This is a port of the original Terra Preda, Terra Preda particles mod. Because high fertility soil and Terra Preda have swapped places in 119. That's just, it just adds particles that will float up of high fertility soil in the world now. Um, these are default things by Tyron, uh, library, whole lot of tree seeds, increases tree seed drop rate across all trees. You don't get a lot of seeds from trees in this game. This adds more. Like, it just increases the amounts by a good amount. It's mainly meant for multiplayer and is technically not balanced for survival. But I plan on building a lot. 
um, because if you have ever watched me play any sort of block game, I'm a builder. So yeah, we're going to need a lot of wood. Wildcraft herbs and spices adds more herbs, spices, seeds, things like that. And then last but not least, wolf taming. We can tame wolves. Like So we're going to be able to tame bears, wolves, horses, and the other default animals that you could tame in the game. Just really cool stuff. All right, let's go ahead and jump over to single player and set up our world. All right, let's go ahead and jump in here into world creation. Um, you might notice a weird little break in this video. Um, I uh, messed up the world generation on the first world and the rivers mod just didn't get to apply. So I know what's changed now and we should get rivers. So scratch that like hour and a half of recording I did earlier. But all the mods are the same. Um, nothing else has changed, so we're going to jump in and create a new world here. Uh, let's kind of roll the world a little bit here. Awesome kingdom world. Okay, I'll go with that. Okay, so we're going to start here. Um, I'm going to do a 10-day timer before monsters appear. We're going to keep inventory com contents because I don't like death runs. Um, death runs are tedious. Like... There's no reason to do death runs. It's, easy. it's a waste of time. Uh, seasons enabled. Player lives infinite. Lung capacity is going to be two minutes. So I have plenty of time for swimming. Days per month. It's going to be 30 days. Because I like really long seasons. So it's going to be fun. Uh, true winters enabled. Block gravity. Sand and gravel. Cave-ins enabled. Uh, we're not going to do underground farming. Uh, I thought about doing underground farming. But that just means I'm not going to build, like, greenhouses or anything. So, let's just not do that. Okay. So, let's go ahead and do... Creature hostility, hostility fine. Player health point, we're going to start at 20. Mm, do, 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 do. Walk speed, slightly fast. No? Okay. Well, we'll just do, we'll just do fast. Screw it. Um, okay. Microblock chiseling, most cubic blocks... Tree sapling growth time, faster. It's gonna go really great with the uh, the mod that adds more like sapling drops. So we're gonna do color accurate world map. So our world map is actually colored like the world is. Temporal storm stuff is fine. Temporal gear respawn use is infinite. I don't plan on dying a lot, but shit happens. Uh, we're not gonna be able to sleep during temporal storms because you might as well just turn temporal storms off if you could sleep through them. Um, so this is where I screwed up the first time I was recording this. Um, <laughs> for the rivers mod, you need to do a land cover scale of 300 to 400% and a land cover of 40 to 50%. So that basically is saying how much, how much percent of the world should be land. The rest is ocean, 50% of the land. And then land cover scale determines how much ocean will be between pieces of land. 400%. Uh, let's go ahead and increase the upheaval rate because bigger worlds. Oh, we need to change the world height to 320 blocks as well. Uh, what's landform scale? Landforms are the principal mechanic that shape the terrain. They are what determine where the lakes, mountains, hills, flatlands, cliffs, how common they are, and optionally, what climate they can occur. An increased landform scale means the same landform will occupy a larger area. In other worlds, you will encounter wider mountains, wider lakes, and wider flatlands. 220%. That sounds fun. World edge traversable can fall down. Sure, we're never going to go out to a million blocks. Not intentionally. A translocator might decide we go out that far, but it's not likely. Um, polar equator distance. We're going to do 200k. How far in blocks a player must walk to reach the equator, starting from polar regions? Only applies if climate distribution is set to realistic. We are set to realistic. So... Um, I was going to do forestation and shrubs with sl somewhat more forest, but it basically feels like I just said forest world. Um, it's ridiculous. So we're going to leave it at normal. Uh, surface copper deposit frequency. I would like that to be common and I'd like tin deposits to be uncommon. I know that probably seems, you know, cheaty, but I don't care. Like I don't want to pan for all my copper for eternity. So, copper, you know, surface deposits, copper frequent, and, you know, make tin slightly more common. 
Um, we're going to turn off land claiming, class exclusive recipes, and the auction house because it's a single player. I don't need any of these multiplayer functions. And class exclusive recipes, boring. Like, I'm going to play a commoner. So, um, let's go ahead and do our world seed. We're going to do. Hmm. You know what? I just had some tostadas. So, let's do a world seed of tostada. <laughs> That's nice and dumb. Um, let's see here. So, and let's go ahead and create our world. This might take a little while because I do have that many mods. So we'll see. All right, we're at the return again point of world generation. That's basically the end. We just gotta wait for it to finish loading up, and we get our character creation. Ooh, did I start on winter? Well, that doesn't seem right. Um, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and make our character here. Uh, we're going to do. Let's go with that skin color. Uh, we're gonna go with a blue eye color. We're going to do our hair type as um, not long flowing. I think I do messy dreadlocks and then do Viking top braid. And facial expression is going to be serious. A mustache. We're going to do a sergeant. No sheriff. No. I said eccentric. No, not eccentric. That's terrible. We're going to do a horseshoe, and then we're going to do a beard of... No, not full chops. Uh, shaggy full. There we go. We change our hair color. There we go. See ourselves dressed. Our underwear is going to be breeches. Boom. We got breeches. Voice type is going to be a sax. <laughs> We're going to do a very low pitch. And like I said, we're going to play a commoner. Um, I just don't care to play the other classes. Like, yeah, they're some cool stuff. Like, hunters are pretty cool. But I just don't want to deal with any, like, negative or drop rates or mining speed decreases. So, if you want to play a class, by all means, go for it. Um, I'm going to stick with commoner because I'm basic. So, confirm skin, confirm class. Okay, and my calendar just switched to spring. So, there we go. Um, let's take a look at our map and see where we're at. Well, I don't see any rivers yet, which is disappointing. But we got a nice big ocean right here, it looks like. Where well, the world's generating. Okay, come on. Give me some rivers. Looks like we're in a basalt area, which is really cool. I like basalt. Uh, if I had to guess, we're a basalt anyway. That's what it looks like. We'll find out shortly. Yep. Oh, okay. World's hitching a little bit as it loads. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we got basalt sand right here. That's pretty cool to start. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and pick up that flint. And you guys have probably seen this if you're a vintage story watcher, but 119 added arms. Um, you actually have arms. I think one thing they did is change the field of view. Maybe not. Huh. Okay. Um, so our temperature is nice and fixed thanks to the Freedom Units mod. It doesn't have a bunch of uh, trailing trailing decimal points. It takes that glorious Celsius and converts it into something my dumb American brain can understand. And look at this. We got native copper bits right here. Bam. Did mark my map? Of course not. Alright. I'm supposed to have a map a mod that marks my map when I interact with things. It doesn't. <laughs> like, I don't know why that mod doesn't work. Oh, pass mod is working. Alright, good deal. So let's go ahead and move on a little bit here. We got some basalt stones. Oh, we got a worm. Come here, worm. We got some flint over here. That's great. Oh, another worm. 
So the worms are from Primitive Survival. Oh, okay. Game, please. See anything cool in the world generate yet? Uh, looks like we might have some ruins over here. Uh, we got a trader wagon right here. All I can see so far, there might be some ruin over here. That looks like it might be some from the uh, the plant matter mod. But yeah, let's go ahead and I think let's go follow the coast for a little bit. Oh, we got reeds over here. This is, we need reeds right away. So let's go ahead. We need to find a stick. There we go. Got a stick, and we need to nap some flint real quick, like uh, left shift. Okay, hang on a second. Game is doing the setting that I don't like. Interface. Immersive mouse mode off. Thank you. I like control of my mouse when I'm in a UI. Like, it's a really weird setting. I don't know why they do that by default. Fish or a squirrel? That looks like a squirrel. Okay. Um, it was hard to tell because it was in the water, so it's like it could have been a fish. Like, I can tell the difference between fish and squirrels, but it was underwater and it was gray. Like, you know. So, the trick for making the reason we made a knife is because cattails, if you break them with your hand, the entire thing breaks and it will never regrow. If you break it with a knife, oh, game. Come on. If you break it with a knife, then the cattail roots stay. And that's what we need. Which is hat mushrooms? I can't remember if these are good to eat. They are. Okay. So we're going to grab as many of those as we can, too, because food. Um, food is wildly important in Adventure Story. Like, you will spend a significant amount of your time in this game making food. Like, you can see we're already getting hungry. Like, it's wild. Like, we've been in the world for five minutes and we're already hungry. So yeah, 119 added arms, um, and the animations don't quite sync up to the time it takes to break things, which is something they've apparently changed in 119.4, which is currently in release candidate phase. Um, so we might get an upgrade here eventually once all my mods update to 119.4, or are confirmed working with it. And that will change a few things, so it's fine. Okay, so the, we're collecting these reeds because they are how you initially expand your inventory. So let me show you. When you start the game, you have the inventory of your hotbar, and that is all. You have to make and expand your inventory. Um, <laughs> and I know that sounds drastic for those of you coming from other block game, but it's not actually that bad. Like, it makes you think about what you're doing. Whoa, okay. Well, I was able to get in that tree. That was weird. Okay. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to open up our inventory here. We're going to take these cattails. And we're going to make some baskets. And it looks like we can make two whole baskets. Because it takes two cattails of each stack here to make the baskets. But now we have six new inventory slots. Which is amazing. And eventually you can upgrade those even more. You can get linen bags. You can get like leather bags or like leather baskets or something like that. Um, let's see where we're at. Okay. Yeah, we were going to head to the coast where we got distracted by cattails. So, Hold that stick. I'm also looking for berry bushes. Oh, speaking of, we got blueberry bushes that are flowering. Okay, so let's go ahead and mark these because I want to come back for them once they've flowered. So let's do fruit, blue. Okay. Blueberries, eight days. There we go. Uh, we got some more flint here. We got a little. Ooh, what is this? 
We got some granite over here. That's nice. Okay. All right. Oh, I got some more copper right here. Hell yeah. There we go. So marking your map when you find resources is wildly important. Um, I mean, just because you need resources. Like, you're going to have to come and collect these things. Like, I'm going to have to come and collect a crap ton of copper. That was a snake. That was a worm. Come here, worm. Wriggly worm. So worms are added by primitive survival, and they can basically be used for a few things. You can eat them, which is gross. You can use it for bait. You can place it on farmland. Or use it in a controlled environment to manufacture worm castings. I don't know what that last one means. I really don't. Uh, what do we got up here? Is that, is that a quartz row? What in the world is that? It looks like it might be quartz. Oh, game lag. Come on. There we go. A little bit of lag there. Uh, the world gen is kind of brutal. Uh, let me check something in my graphics settings. Uh, what is my render distance? View distance? Yeah, see. It has this bad habit of changing your settings per world. Which is kind of annoying. Um, <laughs> oh, look at this copper. Look at all this copper. This is beautiful. All right, let's do another another waypoint right here. Copper. There we go. Can't tell what that is. A oh, wood louse. Oh, it's dead. Okay. Okay, I can't harvest it. Okay, well, I punched a bug and killed it. Um, <laughs> awkward. Sorry, uh, bug fans. I didn't actually mean to kill it. I was just seeing what would happen. It's supposed to be one of the new creatures that were added by one of my mods, which is fine. So that landform scale is definitely coming into play here, because these are some big mountains, right? which is great. Like, I love the world gen in this game. I tried tinkering with a few world gen mods, like there's a Conquest Reforged one. Yes, Conquest Reforged from block game. Um, they have started doing some vintage story stuff, or at least part members of the community have, which makes sense. Um, but they have their own world generator, I didn't really notice much of a difference in the test world that I used it on. But that could just me be, be being dumb. So I'm not going to cancel that one out entirely. I also tried Plains and Valleys. And that just... The world was too much Plains. And I didn't see enough in the way of Valleys. Like I was flying around in creative mode testing that world. Like... And I did not see much in the way of valleys or plains. Well, I mean, everything was plains, just at varying heights. It was strange. I didn't care for it. So I removed that and just went back to vanilla world gen. Oh, we got some more worms. Oh, oh, oh those are fish. Nice. Okay. So one thing we're going to need to do is start making string of various types. And you can set string up with primitive survival across ponds and stuff like that and catch fish by baiting hooks on it. Or just putting hook. You don't even have to bait it. Sometimes the fish are just dumb enough. The bait, of course, helps, as it does in real life. Uh, yeah. Ooh, what is this? Ooh, oh my god. Is that a pine hollow with a linen bag in it? No. It's peanut seeds, turnip seeds... And flax seeds. Nice. Okay. Well, that's a good find. Oh, lag. There we go. And we got some resin. So let's go ahead and mark the map here for resin. Uh, what do we want to do this as? I'm just going to do it like that. We're going to do yellow. Resin is important. It's for sealing canisters and stuff. So, yeah. Grab that. I probably don't need to be grabbing it yet. But if I don't, I'll forget. Like, grab some more flint. Never have too much flint. Especially early game. 
almost done here with the coast. Oh, we got our first blueberries. Uh, let's go ahead and harvest this. Yep. So we grew it. We've, we picked it. Now we don't want to wait for that one to harvest or to reform. So we will take it wherever we end up settling at. Hey, we got more cattails. Let's go. Cattail hype. This is good stuff. This is very good stuff. Because you can also make cordage with these things, too. Um, and cordage can be used for making those fish traps that I was talking about. Or those fish hooks. We got more resin over here on this tree. Okay. Go. We got more resin here. So you're going to spend a lot of time early game marking resources on your map. That way you know where to come back to. Like I said, very important. Like you need to know where these things are. Because not every pine tree gives resin. Which I guess is realistic. I don't really know the dendrology, dendrology that much. I think that's tree, tree lore. Uh, more flint. Let's get over here and see what we can find. Or something making noises. It's weird. Okay. We got some burn nets. What the burn nets? Are they just flowers or can I eat them? I can't eat them. Okay. Well, let's grab all of the burn nets. It's not a lot of saturation, but some saturation. I do apologize for the hitching in the game, too. I'm not sure what's causing it. It's very likely one of my mods, but I'm just not sure which one. So I do apologize in advance. I don't see any rivers on my map yet. This is disappointing so far. Like, I followed the instructions, but I'm still not getting many rivers yet. We got a black currant bush here. Ahead and we'll eat some blueberries. Uh, we'll eat those black currants too. Um, it's not always the best just to eat the fruit right away, but at the beginning of the game, when you're starving, you got to do it because you can eventually turn it into stuff. You can make like jam and whatnot. Ooh, turnips. Very nice. Okay. Um, let's mark these, because my inventory is kind of full at the moment. Uh, let's do that. And purple. Hey! Hey! Piggo! Really? Or boar? Whatever the hell you are? I'm marking turnips. Hey, 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 hey! Come on, now. What's your malfunction, bro? Okay, fine. I'll leave your turnips alone. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, just waddled up to me and it's just like, nah, fuck you in particular. Jeez, I didn't even do anything. Like, I just existed. I'm sorry. <laughs> granite stone, so we're moving into a granite biome. That's nice. Oh, we got onions. So let's try to mark these, hopefully before the pig shows up. <laughs> Onion. Back for those. Hedgehog, nice little hedgehog guy. Oh, we got some more copper right here. Very nice. Actually, I might as well just grab it. There we go. Okay, loose flint. Turnips? Yes, turnips. Okay. So let's go ahead and mark these two. We're going to do this icon. We're going to do this one. Turnip. Okay, let's grab some more cattails while we're here. Okay. 
need to expand our inventory. If we can expand our inventory while we're over here, then we can go collect those vegetables and take them with us without having to come back and deal with the angry pig. I probably should have just made a spear and killed that pig. Okay, that gives us enough cattails for another two baskets, I think. Yes, it does. Look at that. Now we have 20... No, now we have 12 inventory slots. Which means we're going to go pick the vegetables. And more cattails, because you can never have enough cattails. Lag. <laughs> World gen lag. Oh, oh, let's have a mushroom. Red wine cap. Let's see, are you good for me? Yes, you are. You're very good for me. Ooh. Uh, let's mark that, because theoretically these will regrow. Um, I'm not sure for real, but supposedly mushrooms will regrow in areas where you find them if you cut them with a knife. So it doesn't hurt to mark them. Like, okay, we got one of these buildings I was talking about. A plant materials one. A plant material mod one. Um, it's got a living rock, a living rock glyph from the moon on it. Hey, pal. Seriously? I will make a spear and murder you. What I thought. You wanna die? You wanna die? You wanna die? You wanna die? Come on. Come on. Yeah, you better run. Oh jerk. My gosh, all I did was exist near you. <laughs> like holy crap, dude. These guys are dicks. Let's eat a restroom. Um, God, man. Like, seriously. We got sage. That's cool. Um, let's mark that. I'm assuming we can use that for cooking at some point. Go green for sage. Don't ask me why I'm picking the colors. I'm just picking them. Like, oh, we got some spelt right here. Very nice. I'm not trying to clutter my inventory too much, if you know what I mean. Let's do another one of these. We're going to do this. Spelt. But grain is awesome. So theoretically... Oh, I didn't mean to cut that one. But it gave me a seed. So we got a spelt seed. Nice. This is not quite grown yet. So we'll come back for this once it's grown. That seems like the smart idea. Grab more of these cattails. I'm gonna definitely be looking through my logs after this to see if I can figure out which mod is causing the problem. See if we can find any pitches in world gen that would be causing this from a mod. And hopefully I can disable that mod without ruining my world. Look at this, we got ducks! Mallard ducks with a baby mallard! Oh my god, they're adorable. And they have proper animations, unlike other block games. Is that a goose or just another mallard? What type of... Oh, okay, well, whatever it is, whatever type of duck it is, it's afraid of me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on now. The transition to swimming is a little silly. You're like, oh, suddenly you're speed swimming. Okay, we're going to have to make another knife here soon. But it's worth it for all these cattails. So... Sorry, I had to get my dog to stop chewing on his bone. He's just grinding on that thing. 
And if you ever had a dog that's sitting there grinding on a bone with the teeth, it's one of those really annoying noises. It's one of those, like, you love your dog, but man, oh my god, dude. Like, give the bone over the teeth a break. Oh, okay, so we actually got to cut, cut catch bone root. So that's what you can do. You can actually cut these roots with, if you have the knife to get the roots, and they are food. Like, you can cook them. You can't eat them raw, but you can cook them. Actually, you might be able to eat them raw. You can eat a lot of things raw. Not that you should. You should not eat the vast majority of food in the game raw, because it does not give near as much saturation. About to get to our first night time, too. And there goes our first knife. So let's get up here on land, and we're gonna bang ourselves out a new knife. So you can hold Alt while you're in these napping menus. Well, you could try to. Um, it's a little janky. You used to be able to hold. Like, I don't know if something I did changed this, or if the devs did, but you used to just be able to hold while you were using the Alt menu. If anybody knows why I can't do that anymore, please let me know, because it's irritating. Alright, so we got our new knife. Uh, we got some granite stones here. We got some world gen lag. Uh, we got a new black current bush. Very nice. We got two of those now for home. Um, I'm not going to collect any more cattails at the moment. You guys don't need to see me just collecting cattails for an hour. Like, uh, we are going to cut the red currants. Yeah, I know it's flowering, but I'm just going to take it with me. I shouldn't do that, but it's worth it. Valley Herb, a rare herb prize for a soothing salve. Huh. Turns When ground, turns into one golden salve. Interesting. We'll get more of them. So we should probably mark these right here. Um... Let's do plant, valley, herb, well, salve. I have no idea what a salve is good for yet. I'm assuming it's a healing thing. Oh, there's a lot of it, too. Wow. Okay, this is going to be good. This is good stuff. If it becomes a healing thing, this is definitely worth collecting. I'm not entirely sure how to grind it. Which is going to be interesting to figure out. So one thing I might do is move this world to my in-home server. And let the server handle all the world gen. And that might help with my hitching. So I might try that out and see if that makes a difference. Oh, we got a ton of red currents here. It's gonna be great. This will keep us in red currents for a while. Um, as it gets nighttime, it's gonna get real hard for you guys to see. I will try to brighten it in post, um, but you just might not see nighttime like, until I have a torch. We've got black currants flowering. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Come on, quit lagging. There we go. Yeah, if I can uh, if I can pawn World Gen off on my server, that'd be pretty great. Like, I might just be able to load it up into a Docker container and just be like, yeah, just do the thing. Like, I'd appreciate that a lot. I still want to find a river. So I talked about this a lot in my aborted playthrough, but I want to find a river. Like, I want to settle my base near a river. Like, some people might think it's a silly want, but they actually have flowing rivers. 
Like, and I love the idea of that. So, let's, the, well, the mod actually adds flowing rivers, so which is amazing. We got a creature over there. It might be an Arox. I think I've seen Arox before in these gravel biomes. Oh, that's a horse. Um, I did add. I did show you guys the horse mod that I added. So those guys are tameable. Eventually, I don't know how yet. Yeah, those are Arox. So that's great. Um, let's just mark right here. We will do. We'll do not the bees one. Um, we'll mark them with a just a dot. Um, Arox. Theoretically. I could maybe like capture those and like tame them or at least like you know breed them like and then they'll become tame so that'll be neat that was a fox oh we got a ruin over here oh this is a good one this is one of the underground mineshaft ruins so, this is amazing. This is a great find. Um, but these guys they go all the way down to the bottom of the world. And they are expansive mine shafts. So, it's a great find. And they also have some good loot here that is good for getting started. Um, the other playthrough, I got a tin bronze falx out of one of them. Which is just incredible. Like, that's a great find. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's see what we get. So this is a tool vessel. That's perfect. Uh, okay, we got a flint knife. We got a flint axe. We got a flint knife. Okay. Let's keep the axe. Um, oh, it's getting a little hard to see. Like I said, I will do my best to brighten in pros. But we got black coal right here, which is awesome. Uh, oh, we got a food vessel. What are you, my friend? What are you? Spelt grain. Very nice. That is worth getting rid of the cattail root. Okay, world gen. Come on now. Um, heavily collapsed chest. Oh, buddy. Chunks of native copper. I heard the ding for something. Um, tattered crimson tunic. So... My commoner shirt is in terrible condition, and we'll see what kind of condition this comes out as. There is a bit of an issue with the uh, the mods here, or maybe the game in general. Right now, this thing, while it's in its chest, says condition is good. As soon as I take this thing out, its condition is going to change. Tattered, 27%. <laughs> so you see what I mean? Uh, let's see here. We need to do E... Um, I'm going to throw away the one blueberry bush. Um, and I think we will throw away... Shouldn't do it. I'm going to throw away the resin. Um, chunks of native copper are more, more worth my time. I don't why, know why this red nighttime happens. This used to be something that was supposed to be a bug. So let's do this. We're going to do it here. This is going to be mine shaft. Because these things will be worth coming back to in the future. So yeah, I feel like one of my mods might be reintroducing the red darkness. Because this was not this is supposed to have been fixed. Um I don't like it. Like we got nine more days until monsters begin to appear, which is great. Hopefully we can find a place to settle by then. You know, a.k.a. a river game. Like, where are my rivers? What am I hearing right now? Oh, Lord. What, what the hell was that? Oh, that's a bear. Okay, that's a bear. Okay, that's a bear. Um, that's a bear. That's a bear.
Okie dokie. That's a bear. <laughs> uh, that was a bear. It was hurting something else that sounded human. Or, you know, whatever passes for people in this game. I think they're called seraphs. Um, come on, Worldgen. I'm running from a bear. You could just not try to kill me. That'd be great. Okay, I think we're away from the bear. They can't swim as... Animals cannot swim as well in deep water as people can. So... That's pretty great. Um, how many of these can I make? Uh, I can make one. <sighs> We're going to cut some more grass here and see if we can make ourselves a bed to sleep away the night. Probably throw something on the ground for now. Throw the turnip seeds on the ground. I can always find more turnips. Like... Okay, a few more. Bear scared the crap out of me, dude. Just like, oh, that's a bear. Like... Okay, is that enough to make another one? Yes, it is. Okay, so now... We should be able to make a bed. Yep, hay bed. Fantastic. Oh, is it get, starting to get light out already? Let's just sleep for a little bit. Hey, it's 5 a.m. That should be enough. Yeah, there we go. I can see again. Hooray. Oh, oh mushrooms on the tree. Mushrooms on the tree. Let's go. Uh, tinder hoofs. Uh, let's throw away the one bit of. I think these are edible. Yes, they are. Fantastic. Let's mark this on the map. Hang on, I did not do a good job clicking that. Tinder hoof tree. Bearded tooth. Okay. Not sure what the difference is. Bearded tooth. Uh, what's the difference with you? It doesn't seem to be any difference. But it's food. I need food way more than I need those eight copper nuggets. Yes, I'm keeping the copper or chunks because those will yield way more copper as soon as I can make a hammer. Which probably will be longer than it would take me to get copper nuggets, but it's still going to yield way more. So, um, let's go ahead and eat some of these guys real quick. Fox Sedge. I'm kind of afraid to go back the direction we were. Ooh, more copper. Look at this. Nope, oh, copper, copper. Got some turnips. These are mature. These are mature turnips too. That's definitely worth taking. Turnip seeds off of those. Turnip seeds off of that. Good deal. Oh joy, that's a wolf. That's a wolf. Run away. Run away. Yep. Hi, hey, buddy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to come near you. 
Um, so wolves and bears will fuck you up. Um, if you play Vintage Story, you know this. If you don't currently play Vintage Story, bears will fuck you up. Do not toy with bears or wolves early game until you have like spears and can actually defend yourself a little bit. Um, just run. We're going to go over here because it looks like there's a landmass over this way. Ooh. Ooh, this is a pine forest it looks like. Really nice looking pine forest too. Please have rivers. <laughs> All I want is a river game. Like, oblige me. All I want is a river. Just a single river. I will be happy with one river. Like, that's all I want is a single river. But it doesn't look like I'm destined to get a river off of this island. Or off this hunk of land. That is sad panda moments. Um, this is another granite biome. Lots of pine. Okay, we got some aurochs. Okay. Several days left before ready to mate. Nice, okay. Yes, I saw the resin. I don't care. I'm sure there's a ton of resin in here because this is all pine. So... Oh, wow, look at that. That's cool. I'm half tempted to load up into creative mode and fly around and see if I actually see any rivers. Like... I just really want to find a river. Like, I don't know why that's so much to ask. I might just make a copy of this world and create it with another seed, or create it with the same seed, and go fly around in that world. That way I don't spoil the purity of this one, but I can also find a river and have a general idea where to go. Like, so far, the Tostada world is letting us down for rivers. Here we got a lupine field here. That's cool. If you ever want flowers, which we'll need eventually for bees. Especially with that bee mod that we have. So yeah, you know what? I think I am going to create a copy of this world. With the same seed in the same settings. And try to find myself a river. Like... I'm tired of wandering aimlessly looking for a river. Like, it's really annoying that I haven't found one yet. So I'm just going to insert this little clip here. Because um, this is a copy of the world in creative mode. And you guys aren't going to believe this. But I just went the wrong freaking way from spawn. Here's spawn. I went this way. There was a river this close. <laughs> So, yeah, we're going to load back up into the survival world, and we're going to book it back in the other direction. But I wanted you to get a clip of the rivers here, so we can just see this. Look at this. They actually have a flowing current. Is this not the coolest damn thing? Like, tell me this is not something Vintage Story needs. Like, as part of vanilla. Oh, look, there's a mine shaft underneath here. <laughs> This is amazing, and it flows right out to this ocean. Look at this. This is why I added this mod. Like, this is entirely why I added this mod. Because rivers are so freaking cool. Look at that stones with moss on them. <laughs> like, it's massive, too. Like, it's an actual proper river. I think the water might be flowing technically in the wrong direction if this is the ocean, but this might be a lake. There might be an ocean at the other end. But, yeah, so I'm going to load back up into the survivor world, and we're going to book it back over here, because I want to move next to the river. <laughs> so, yeah, I will see you guys soon. All right, so here we go. We're back on the login, the main screen here. So you can see I made a creative test world. It's the exact same setting, almost the exact same settings. I didn't worry some about some of the gameplay settings because they don't matter. 
but yeah, we're going to jump back into the world because I'm so bad that I went the wrong direction <laughs> and there was a river that close to spawn. Yeah, it's definitely worth it to hoof it back to that river. There's a lot of cool stuff over there. There's a nice plain to live in. Um, there was ruins over there. Uh, there's all sorts of cool stuff. Like, it's definitely worth going back. Oh, I'm so mad that I just went the wrong direction. <laughs> like, it's just absolutely infuriating. Okay, we're at return again. There we go. <laughs> oh, folks, I tell you. Like, so, we're here. We need to head back over here. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and eat up some food. And we're just going to book it back. Come here, turnips. We're going to eat you too. We're just going to go as far back as our little legs can carry us. Assuming the world lets us. Because, you know, world gen lag. Okay, there we go. Yep, all right, good deal. Oof. That was the worst bit of lag I've ever gotten. So we're gonna swim. <laughs> we are gonna swim, and we're gonna swim. We're gonna check some of these ruins here and see if there's anything good at them. Not that we have inventory space, but that's a forage vessel. Okay, flint and straw. All right, worth it. Let's check our map. Yeah, we just need to swim back. Bro, this freaking bored, man. Like, seriously? Like, leave me alone, my dude. Like, I'm sorry I came within breathing distance of you. I didn't mean to. Like, I didn't know you were there. <laughs> just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Oh, there's a fox. Hi, fox. You swimming too? All right. Good deal, bro. Right, we're pretty much back to spawn over here, but I just want to keep swimming and probably work our way inland here soon. The section of the river I want to get to is a little farther than what I showed in that clip. Um, that ran down into some forest. And as we know, forest is where bears live. Um, we don't want to play with bears. Bears are bad news. You know, bad news bears. Is it a cave? Oh wow, that's a cave. Yep. All right, we're not going in there. Um, let's go ahead and eat this rhubarb. It doesn't give much in the way of saturation, but it's food, and it will keep us fed on our way to the good parts of the world. So these things are new to 119. Tool. Um, I think it can be used to big thatch roofing. So we're going to go ahead and mark this area. We've got plantains. Nice. Um, but I want to mark this area and mark it for tool. Um, we'll do a light green and it'll be a plant. There we go. Time. Very nice. Hi, Aurochs. Bye, Aurochs. Oh, we got a ruin right here. Uh, anything good? Doesn't look like it. But it's basalt cobble, so that might be worth coming back to eventually. As far as being on just getting a good building material. Oh, we got a bigger ruin here, too. Ooh. Tool in there. 
co got a copper deposit down here too. That's neat. Um, a food vessel. Come here. Yes, please. Daddy like. I'm um, sorry, fine seed. You are sacrificed for the rice grain. Uh, we should probably mark this one. Press again would work. There we go. There we go. Copper. A whole bunch of tool over here, too. Very nice. Yeah, we definitely just went to the wrong side of the world. Like, this side of the world is so much better. I am so much happier on this side of the world. Like, uh, Rome run inventory. I would like my tinder hoofs. Oh, we got another mine shaft right here. Maybe we can find something good in this one area. So you can see one of these in the daylight now. Hooray! Okay, we got a tool vessel. We got a heavily collapsed chest. A jord robe. Okay. Um, yeah, seriously. A jord robe. So that is probably going to replace my pants. No. Okay. Condition terrible. Oh, rusty gears. That's a nice that's a nice find. Let's grab some of that copper. We'll grab the sticks. Uh, quartz chunks, cool. Let's see what else is here. Um, so there's black coal here, that's awesome. Got another food vessel. Oh, some more rice grain. Very nice. Alright, let's see if this tool vessel gives us anything good. Okay. No, not really. Okay. Well, we got another we got another stone axe. Um, but we are... Ooh, that's obsidian. Oh, crap, dude. Come here. Obsidian is amazing. It's one of the most durable things to make early game tools with. So, let's look around and see if there's some more hiding here. Got to be getting close to the river. Just have to be getting close. Oh, those are horses. Oh my gosh. They they were so distorted by the view. They looked like Eldritch Horrors. So I was like, what the hell is that? Okay, yes, I recognize this area. This is near the river. Look at the river. It's a river. Oh my god, I'm so freaking happy. Oh, this is what I wanted. Look at these ruins. This is so good, dude. This is so good. This is exactly what I wanted. Oh my god, look at the current! It's got a good current! Oof! <laughs> Check it out! Oh, this is also... Oh, there's another mine shaft right here, too. Perfection! This is the promised land, ladies and gentlemen. We have found the promised land. <laughs> Somebody call Shinra. We have found the promised land. Huzzah! Oh my god, we have found it, we have found it, we have found the promised land. Look at this, nice little, nice little area just kind of settled down in a little bit. Collapsed chest, slate roofing corner, alright. We'll grab those sticks, you can never have too much stick. Go. There might be some more stuff up there, and I just can't tell from here. Let's go over here. Can I jump up there? No, not quite. Oh, crap. Okay, I didn't take fall damage. Okay, so we got some wood rubble. We got some farming vessel here. Okay. Um, just reeds. Okay. Oh, there's a hoe there, maybe? What else is there? Oh my god, a copper scythe. Bro, a copper scythe? Really? Let's go. And there's a rift nearby. Let's 
to another chest. Got some rusty gears here. A lead ingot. Wow, okay. That's cool. Uh, let's go ahead and scythe up the ground. Yep, yeah, yeah. Okay, we need to make a basket or two, a ground basket to put down. Oh yeah, there's our rift friend. He was like, "Oh, you found a place to call home? What would I? What would you think if I spawned here? Like, would you? Would you be upset?" So this is amazing. This is exactly what I wanted to find. So science harvest a three by three area. Uh, if it wasn't clear. But yeah, this is where we're going to start our start our living at. I am very happy. I think there's a thunderstorm coming or am I just hearing thunder from the rift? I'm not sure. Um, let's go ahead and make a basket. Reed chests. Okay, made two reed chests. Fantastic. Okay, so. I'm just going to move all our plants over to that one. Put our bed down here. And this is our home for the foreseeable future. So, guys, um, I know this was a completely lacking in progression episode and a whole lot of me complaining about lack of rivers. But we got what we were looking for. We have a river. And it's going to be awesome. Like, it's going to be the best thing. So, yeah, I will see you all in episode two. And we're going to get around to settling this area and turning it into a village. Um, eventually, this whole ruin is going to get torn down. Um, I want to do, like, a norse theme build. So a lot of the housing built into the ground with, like, thatch roofing and stuff over the top of it. So, yeah. Um, look forward to the next episode, and I will see you all then. Peace!